Hey everyone, and welcome to the inaugural episode of the Breath Science Podcast with me, Martin McFillamy. So in this episode, we are going to take a bit of a deep dive into the mammalian dive reflex, which is a, an essential and protective mechanism that occurs when we dip ourselves into cold water. Before we dive into that, I'm just going to explain a little bit of this podcast because it's a, it's a, it's a new concept that I, I have integrated into Perform True Health. Now, for those of you that know me, you'll know that I spent 14 years as a respiratory and sleep scientist, but prior to that, having degrees in exercise physiology and always having a massive, massive passion for human physiology. So this breath science podcast is to give you some information around the true science of physiology, of breath work, of sleep optimization, of recovery science, and all the popular well-being exercises we're seeing today, including the Wim Hof method, oxygen advantage, um, you know, the likes of James Nestor. All these individuals have brought to the forefront this concept of breathing and breath science as a means to improve our well-being, our performance, etc. And what I want to do is I want to help people understand the science behind this. I want people to understand the deeper physiology. We'll be breaking down papers. We'll be interviewing people. We'll be in having conversations around education. And all of this is to lead up to help people to understand on a deeper level, but also if you're a coach, to give you some insight of what it would like to be on my breath science certification, which you can visit at www.breathscience.com.au. So what is the Mamelonian dive reflex? Now, when we submerge ourselves into water, particularly cold water, our body has a response where we get an increase in our vagal activity, meaning that the vagus nerve itself is acting on the heart in a manner suggested to bring down our heart rate. Now, why would we want to do that when we're in the water? Because when we're in the water, there is a chance that we might want to take a breath as our last gasp, and we might end up being submerged. It's been considered that this has evolved from our, our reptile part of ourselves that has developed now and evolved into a, a mammal. But when mammals do submerge themselves, they get a response that is uh, helping to prevent the utilization of oxygen. So it's a conservation method. We could say it is a, a bit of like a, a freeze response in terms of the, the stressor it can make on our body. We're going into conservation, just like a bear would go into hibernate during the winter and conserve energy so it can come out in the, in the, in the spring to conserve its food and therefore and go out and do its foraging and survive. The survival mechanism of a melon when it gets into water is to ensure that while well, warm, we are not water species. So therefore human beings will need to conserve their energy and conserve their oxygen levels. So we're going to break this down from a paper by Ackerman et al. in 2022. And this was a systematic review that looked at the, the impact of the, the dive reflex on cardiac vagal tone. And cardiac vagal tone is measured by your trackers. That is, uh, um, you know, we were measuring that as we call it heart rate variability. And within heart rate, heart rate variability, there are all different kind of domains. And the one that we're looking at is the root mean squared standard deviation of the high frequency domain of heart rate variability, which is an indicator of parasympathetic nervous activity. And therefore, an indicator of what's going in the heart and whether the heart is being impacted by the different aspects of the dive reflex. We're going to break it down into the breath itself whether breath holding, because that's what we'll do and we'll submerge ourselves into water. How much impact does the breath hold actually have on cardiac vagal tone? And then we'll look at the submersion of the water itself and how much impact that has on the cardiac vagal tone. So according to the paper, this was a systematic review and meta-analysis that looked at all different studies. And essentially what they found is the breath hold component of and water submerge, the data was pretty conflicting, meaning that there was some data to say that it was a breath hold will 
cause a reduction in their heart rates. However, they weren't sure whether this was directly to cardiac vagal tone itself, because a lot of other papers didn't agree with that. Now, if we think mechanically of what happens when we take a breath in and when we hold our breath, we have to consider interthoracic pressures. So the pressure that is going on inside our lung cavity. So to inhale, we have to create a negative pressure because air will move from a high, high pressure to a low pressure. All around us, the atmosphere is roughly 760 millions of mercury. So we need to be able to lower that inside our body to get some air to enter. And that is what the diaphragm does when it contracts. It creates a negative pressure. The pressure is lower. And then according to Bohr's law, we can then actually uh, start to move uh, air from a, from a, to, to create a larger volume. Now, when we get that larger volume, the heart will actually get a little bit larger. So the heart's larger then because of Boyle's law, again, the opposite will happen in the ventricle of the heart. So we'll get a reduction in pressure. The role of the heart, however, is to continue to get the same amount of blood flow out of the body. We call that cardiac output, which is the heart rate times the stroke volume. Now the stroke volume of the heart, the contraction, depends on how much pressure and venous return, how much blood is coming back from our, on our from our, from our veins, our pulmonary vein, to enter into our heart. So if the pressure is lower in the heart, then we're going to get less blood out per heartbeat. So the heart rate has to go up. So that means that when we inspire, when we take air in, in fact, that's actually increasing sympathetic nervous activity. So we'll get a reduction in cardiac vagal tone. When we breathe out, the opposite happens. And we, therefore, we get respiratory sinus arrhythmia. So it's the increase or decrease in our heart rate as we breathe. That's a natural phenomenon. But now we have to consider, we've took a breath in, which is increasing sympathetic nervous activity and actually decreasing cardiac vagal tone. But then we hold the breath and watch what happens. So when we hold that breath, what we're gonna get is actually the diaphragm will then start to relax a little bit. And the interthoracic pressure will actually increase because the expansion of the air will increase and we'll push up into the vocal cords into the epiglottis and we push across here. So we get an increase in interthoracic pressure. So the heart might actually get a little bit smaller. So when we hold our breath on an inhale, mechanistically, it, sound, it's, it seems as though we're going to have more pressure in the heart and therefore cardiac vagal tone needs to reduce. And this is what's been demonstrated in the, the research. The research suggests when initially we, small, we see on a breath hold inhale, we see a small drop in the, the, uh, the heartbeat, in the heart rate, sorry. However, after around about 15 to 20 seconds, the heart rate starts to come down more. And that seems as though it is a part of the mammalian dive reflex. However, the paper itself at the meta-analysis they make a suggestion that maybe it's not actually cardiac vagal tone that's doing this. It's car sorry, cardiac vagal activity that's not doing that. But they didn't point into what's going on. They thought maybe it's just down me mechanistically of what's, of what's occurring. And my suggestion is it's actually down to the pressure itself. So breath holding, specifically breath holding on an inhale, may promote an increase in uh, cardiac vagal activity and therefore may vagal tone, meaning that the breath hold on an inhale is more parasympathetic. But we can't take that data as strong data because there was conflict in. However, when it's come to the cold itself, it's believed that the submersion of the cold, specifically on the face, activates a reflex by the trigeminal. And that is to bring blood flow from the peripherals to the vital organs and to the body and to conserve oxygen so that we can last and that we can survive. Now, this obviously has an impact on bringing down heart rate. But because the cold then can increase cardiac vagal activity, increase in vagal tone, there are some suggestions that we might be able to use the mammalian dive reflex whether that be through cold exposure or whether it might be through breath holding to potentially help in situations where individuals might be stressed or might have stress-related concerns such as anxiety. So now a lot of the research is actually looking at whether we can utilize breath holds in cold as a means to look at mental health disorders or mental health problems or anxiety. And that makes sense, right? Because in these situations, we actually see a reduction in HRV, which indicates a, a reduced cardiac vagal tone. 
And that will be negative in terms of people's ability to respond to their emotional reactions, to be able to recover from exercise, to be able to repair and rejuvenate the body. And therefore, utilizing tools such as inhale breath holds, but also as cold water immersion might be a, a means to explore particular therapies. And we know that. We'll do a whole session on cold water therapy and the, the, the benefits to that in another session. However, before I do go, I do want to mention a couple of things. We've got to be mindful with breath holding that if you have significant health concerns, such as heart, previous heart attacks, strokes, um, di diabetes and vascular system uh, problems or, or pregnancy, then, or any significant health disease, then you're, you're going to want to be able to get you know, confirmation from your doctor that you're, you're fit to do breath work, breath hold situations or to expose yourself to the cold. And we don't want to be doing things such as Wim Hof breathing or hyperventilation at any time when we are submerged or submerging ourselves in water, because that is going to remove our first desire to breathe, our air hunger that is created by CO2, because we've offloaded that. And therefore, the breath hold itself, we have no trigger or warning that oxygen levels are too low. And it can result in shallow water blackout. So just to summarize the mammalonian dive reflex is a, a, a reflex by the trigeminal nerve to conserve energy in our body as a last resort of survival mechanism or potentially even to help in situations where we may be trying to hunt such a prey during uh, a, a, that we're out in the ocean or, or those sort of things it's a trainable skill however it should be only trained by those individuals who are healthy and you should never really push your limits consistently and make sure that you always have a training partner if you're going to submerge yourself in the water. So drop any questions you have below, uh, hit a like, hit share, and uh, reach out to me if should you want to learn more about breath science. Thanks for tuning in.